According to the U.S. Census Bureau, only about 14.9% of people aged 18 to 29 voted in their elections in the 20th century. However, going to the 21st century, a growing number of young adults began to cast their ballots. In 2008, the percentage rose up to about 17.1%. The young adults are becoming an age group that are contributing greatly to the outcome of the elections. Then what are the government's responses to this political transition? Good afternoon, my name is Ephraim Ho and these are my colleagues. Hi, my name is Emma Hamilton. Hi, my name is Arno Chabra. The question that comes to mind when addressing this topic is to what extent has the increased participation of young adults voting in elections within the United States impacted federal policy within the 21st century? Well, our group's claim is that the increased participation of young adults voting in elections has led to the federal government adopting policies that support the views of the youth, leading to them becoming more progressive. This would lead to the topic of what the views of the youth are. The Center for American Progress conducted a survey in which to determine the political ideologies of the youth voters, and they found that younger voters tend to be more progressive. As the survey found, on average, young voters are 245.9 liberal Democrats and 179.1 conservative Republicans. This point is further illustrated by the image on the right in which it breaks down political ideologies in age groups. The leftmost column, groups 18 to 29, shows 54% of young voters are liberal Democrats and 29% are conservative Republicans. Now that it has been established that young voters tend to vote for Democratic lawmakers, we can look to the impact this would have on federal policies. When younger voters vote for, when younger voters participate in midterm elections or presidential elections, they vote for politicians with similar political ideologies as they have that could implement these into federal policies. The image on the right shows that younger voters voted for Democratic candidates at 67% in the midterm election of 2018 and 32% for conservative Republicans in the midterm election of 2018. But eventually lead to those lawmakers who are elected to enact legislation that supports the views of the young voters into law. When young voters vote, they don't only elect representatives, senators, and a president. They, they, they would vote for them through these elections and Congress would eventually draft this legislation and then be, be sent to the president to be signed into law. Throughout elections, there are countless issues that fuel the youth vote. These issues include social and economic inequalities, climate change, and gun violence. An example of a widely known social movement that fueled the young adults to vote in the election was the March for Our Lives movement. On February 14, 2018, a government opened fire with a rifle at a high school in Parkland, Florida, killing 17 people. This devastating event, as you know today, is the Stoneman Douglas High School shooting. Soon after this event, many youth organized and led the social movement that fought against gun control. On March 24, 2018, the youth led the March for Our Lives movement where more than 200,000 people gathered to support the movement and its cause. These events also transpire on the time when the 2018 midterm election is approaching. This is crucial because the development of the March for Our Lives movement had great impacts on the midterm election. According to the Circle, which is an organization that conducts research on civic learning and engagement, about 2,100 young people aged 20, 18 to 24 who considers, consider themselves part of that movement reported an increased likelihood to vote in the elections. The young adults clearly expressed their views by voting in the elections. As my colleague Arnav stated, Young adults voted in the 2018 midterm elections for Democratic candidates in large numbers. This is due to youth participation in social movements and their desire to enact legislation that address these issues. This is also supported by statistics on the slide, which shows that early voting among 18 to 29 year olds increased by 188% compared to 2014. As shown by the chart, this is a huge leap from 19.9% to nearly 35.6%. Overall, the young adults' participation in elections increased over time. The fourth line on the graph, which indicates the age group of 18 to 29, shows that in the 21st century, there has been an increase in voting rates of young adults. It started out as about 40% in the year 2000, but increased about 50% by 2008. In response to the increased participation of young adults voting in the elections, the federal government adopted policies that supported these social issues, of the youth. First, they passed the firearms legislation in 2019, which required a background check for every firearm sale. Later in the year, 
the government passed the Bomb Stocks and Acceleration Device Set, which treated bomb stock type devices as machine guns and banned the possession or transfer of other devices designed to accelerate the rate of fire of a semi automatic firearm. To add on to what my colleague Ephraim stated when previously discussing the midterm elections, these elections have changed every year because of the amount of young adults voting throughout history. The participation of young adults in elections correlates with the participation in social movements. These social movements are factors that greatly affect the levels of youth participation in election cycles throughout history. Another example of how election cycles change throughout the years is during 2020 when the world was faced with the pandemic. There was an increased participation of youth voting because of the access to voting was easier to, to improve technologies such as voting machines, as shown in the image. In 2020 election cycle, many youth voters had voted based on the issues they felt needed to be addressed, a major one being the COVID-19 pandemic. This was because of the new living conditions many young voters have been experiencing during the pandemic and their belief for new technologies and inventions to fight the virus. According to the Museum of American History, with and without the vote and throughout American history, young people have been forced to be reckoned with as they take action and stand in support of the issues that matter the most. As my colleague Arnoff stated, Democratic young voters participated in larger numbers in elections to support the issues that matter the most to them, and they've had participated in changing these issues whether they can vote or not. In the history of the United States as a whole country, it has evolved to include more opinions and beliefs, but also for the future. With this being said, young adults take action on what matters most in the future of their country in, res in response to the key issues that face it. As you can see by the graph shown on this slide, in dark blue, we have ages 18 through 29 voting greater numbers as years pass by, especially in the developing years of the United States, such as the year 2008. The young adults voted at a much higher level compared to the previous years. As our country developed, it, the more involved these young adults are, which would further increase the participation of 18 through 29 year old voters and continue to have a bigger impact on federal policies. A potential solution to our claim is that the federal government can pass policies that support conservative views of the young adults in order to make legislation less progressive. However, this solution has some limitations because young voters that are progressive, which is the majority of the young voters, could feel neglected by these conservative views and might not vote in future elections. This would decrease the amount of participation in political issues and as a result hurt democracy since it would lead to fewer young adults performing their civic duties, which could help the country grow. So the solution we decided on and agreed to as a team is that the federal government can pass policies that support all views of the youth in order to maintain high youth participation in the elections. This would lead to both the conservative vote, conservative youth voters, and the liberal youth voters being satisfied with federal policies because the policies would be more inclusive. The federal government may pass few policies that address these social issues, such as cultural inequalities and social injustice. They could also keep the existing laws um, because the conservative youth voters who may disagree with the ideas supported by the liberals would like that. There are some limitations to this in that young voters are progressive, may feel disappointed because the legislation may not be as progressive as, as they hoped for. This would in turn decrease the, the participation of these progressive voters in elections rather than increase it. And here are a list of our sources. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah, let me set the camera up here and then I have a question for each of you. Okay. Um, Ephraim, your first question. Describe how the content of the team presentation changed as a result of your discussions. So our team presentation changed multiple times when discussing our solution to the team's users question. Because for example, when we were writing our IRRs, 
I researched on the federal policies that the federal government supported um, the young adults' views. And Arna researched on the preferences of the young adults' voting choice in the elections. And based on the different perspectives we gather as a team, um, we discussed our potential solution and came to a conclusion that the solution of the federal government passing the federal policies that support all views of the youth to maintain high youth participation would be the most ideal and effective. All right, thank you. Arnav, in what way did you improve your ability to work with a group as a result of this project? At the time we were given in our um, in, in this project, I would say my ability to work with this group has improved positively throughout this uh, experience because we, our group, we personally did an excellent job of splitting up the amount of work we had. And when it came to our slides, for example, Ephraim, he worked on federal policies and social movements. I worked on political voting trends and Emma vo voted, um, and Emma focused on how young adults voted um, in the past year and throughout history. And through, um, and our, my, my ability to work with the team improved greatly because our group, we communicated with each other multiple times, whether it was to meet after school or however to be flexible in, in accordance to someone's time schedules. And my ability to work uh, with the team increase, um, imp was positively impacted because I was able to accommodate to people's um, needs. You were muted, Mr. Pierce. That is my fault, I apologize. Emma, sorry. Emma, what's the strongest counter argument to the solution that your team identified? Um, the strongest counter argument to the solution our team identified, as mentioned, was the limitation, was the young adults that are progressive may feel disappointed um, by, the um, by the legislation um, that they've probably not hoped for could lead to them not participation, participating in elections. Um, if the federal government passes more moderate legislation rather than progressive legislation, these um, young voters could be disappointed because they feel that the legislation is created by lawmakers and they don't want to elect the, those lawmakers to um, that don't meet their beliefs or um, social issues. 